This is Corbin. That's Rick. You yeah. can follow us on Instagram and Twitter for yeah. more juicy content. You can also subscribe to our fellow YouTube channel. You can also follow us on the Squad. Bang! Yeah. And if you uh, skip the intro, it was all about the boys. So for you girls out there, girl, girl, girl. Today, uh, we are reacted to a Gordon Ramsay video. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. I think it's from the same series that we've been doing. Oh, good. Was, doing. Was, it, was it that long video? Uh, yeah, this one's about five minutes. So All right. <laughs> so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it doesn't finish. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> stop in mid-sentence. Uh, this one's Gordon Ramsay is blown away by the tribe's curry. All right. What uh, tribe? I don't know. The tribe. The tribe. Well, there's only the one tribe. in the world. Yeah. Yep. You, they, you, all people groups. Wait, it's kind of like, tribe. It's kind of like Oprah. You just know who you're talking about. That's true. The tribe. tribe. <laughs> just like Oprah. Just like Oprah, the tribe. Uh, anyways, um, but yeah, I hope you're not hungry. I'm sure it's gonna have some tasty food in it. It's it's gonna, I always am, so. You're always hungry? I just wanna hear him, I wanna see him take a bite of something and say, go bloody hell. <laughs> bloody hell. It's a terrible Gordon Ramsay. Here we go. <laughs> now for the real reason I'm here. I'm gonna see what makes a Nagaland curry so different Nagaland. to anything I've ever tasted before. Nagaland. Is that Northeastern? Yes. And I've been gifted the venison. Mr. Honley is gonna create a curry using the boar that he slaughtered. Oh. oh God. So, in the kidney. Oh. oh. Uh, the flesh. Uh, kidney, liver, 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 and belly. Are you cooking everything at the same time? See, normally, we'd cook this separately. It's very rustic. Do we? Nothing's filleted, nothing's yeah, ever Yeah, very rustic and it's not wasted. And what's that dad's putting there now? My father is uh, putting another kind of leaf which you find in the forest. And what's it like? It's quite citrusy, no? Yeah, yeah. It's like lavender. We use even the fruits for right. spice, like pepper. Everything Mr. Holly is using in his dish comes from his own land. This is the first Indian curry I've seen made without any dried spices. What's oh. that doing with the chilies? Whoa! He's uh, roasting it. <laughs> we have a uh, better flavoring if we roast it on the ash like that. Yeah. And it gives a better scent. Yeah. Well, we got we do the same with peppers. And the most surprising ingredient is something I've never seen before. It's bamboo shoot. Yeah, that's a fascinating smell. Like, you know, Fermented, slightly spicy edge to it. While the pork and the bamboo curry cooks. I'm gonna try out these Nagaland ingredients with my saddle of venison to see what I can come up with. Pure fillet. The back strap? Just a little touch. They intrigue me the flavor fillet. though, I know. That piece looks like back strap on a beer. How'd you turn up the gas? <laughs> Thank you. How many Westerners have come and cook in this kitchen? None. No, I'm the first. I would not know what to do. Huh? I don't even know what to do in my kitchen. Mmm, it's a tradition in Scotland. We always have a swig each. Oh, yes. It means mm. our passion is joined with the dish. Okay. While my venison curry was, uh, juices, clearly before Mr. COVID. Holmes pork and bamboo yeah. curry is already done. He's, and I can't wait to taste it. You would have done the same thing it. before the COVID. It's delicious. Very tasting, the chili and the garlic. And it looked quite sort of boring and greasy. But flavor-wise, delicious. That's delicious, the pork. The villagers from today's hunt that didn't get a cut of the deer came to share mine. Mm. Very nice. That's crazy. They Happy hunted it. Yes. They're cooking it. it. Yep. Can you just give them a second helping? Cool. Share it with the village. There's real community spirit here, and it makes eating together all that more enjoyable. Goodbye, father. Goodbye, sister. <laughs> if I don't see you in this morning. <laughs> <laughs> the pork dish I tasted of theirs was amazing. You'd think that there was 15 different spices. The dried bamboo, in terms of flavour, it's intense. Yeah, it has an intriguing sort of um, turnip, throat, cardamom, sort of slightly spicy edge to it. Who would ever believe we're in India? No spice, no turmeric, yeah, no coriander, no cinnamon, no cloves. Yeah, that's crazy. Everything's just... Wow. 
you know, from the ground. It's quite interesting. You dive into their world and you get rid of that monkey on your back and all of a sudden you start to relax in a big way and forget anything outside this village. Mm. Yeah. Cool, sir. Oh, I Oh, okay. cool, cool, good. I was like, ah, I'd hate I hate seeing this little snippet, but like, I want to keep watching. And Nagaland didn't disappoint. I've had my first taste of this region's indigenous ingredients, and I can't wait to see what other surprises the Northeast has in store. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Made me feel so special. Okay. Best wishes. Thank you, my love. Take care. Upwards and onwards. That's beautiful. And I've taken a bit of Nagaland with me. I want to use the bamboo shoot on my food store when I get back to Calcutta. Extraordinary. Different and incredibly rustic. Very humble, very simple, but fascinating food dough. Totally um, It looks a lot like Papua New Guinea. And in a way, nothing Indian. Mm. Why do they always cut them? <laughs> I don't know who edited these. Stop cutting them off when they're talking. <laughs> End the segment, and then put the next segment in another video. <laughs> Not, I think it was, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, anyway, I love seeing Gordon Ramsay in this setting, because mm -hmm. obviously we're used to Gordon Ramsay in Hell's as, Kitchen. Yeah, as the chef. Yeah, yeah. so he's just going, go yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, stuff like that, and that's, you know, why you love him. Here's, like, he's still obviously Gordon Ramsay, and you love his on. He's like the salmon, uh, Sal Sal Why am I saying Salmon? S Simon Cow. <laughs> <laughs> Not Salmon Cow. Not Salmon Cow. <laughs> Salmon Cow. 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 Simon. Cow. Uh, Simon Cow of food, basically. Yeah, uh, exactly. Just gonna tell you, you know, honestly, tell you off uh, if you if you're complete shite. Yep. Um, but seeing him in this area that's very humbling and him learning. Uh, I love it. I think it's a, a, a great series uh, from all the videos we've seen of it. Any travel series like this, for most people, if they're going about it in a way that's authentic, which everything he, he does, he's an authentic guy, but it's a reminder as well of, of you know, international travel, sadly, is a luxury for most people. Mm -hmm. But it's, I think it's a necessity for the, for the human experience, especially for Westerners. Oh, yeah. Um, I've, I've discovered that international travel or living in an international city. There's a reason international cities tend to be more open-minded and progressive because they're not thinking about their own world. Their <laughs> minds are open to, I mean, just, just something as simple as the humbling experience of going to a place where the language isn't yours, the money isn't yours, where you're dependent yep. on the other people there. I've, and it's not your neck of the woods. I've always, and they might be coming from my parents there, very, um, they, I think they think the similar way. Obviously, my dad does, but um, I've always thought it's very dangerous. And I think anybody or any around the world to stay in one place Agreed. your entire life. Agreed. You, I, I know a lot of people. That's where people are comfortable. That's where your family is. And some people don't have a choice based yeah, on yeah. economic constraints, yeah, even saying, governmental yeah. constraints. They can't leave a country. Uh, but. I think it's very dangerous in terms of, because even if you are in the most liberal, I mean, it's not really even about liberal, conservative, or anything like right. that. Right, not at all. It's about you're going to get in a way and you're not going to know how anybody else thinks or how anybody else does anything. Uh, and, and why they yeah. do what they do. You, don't, yes. you won't be able to understand other people if you stay in one place your whole life, especially because there's a huge problem here, obviously, in the South. Um, people tend to stay. Right. And the central, central yeah. and south, central and landlocked. South. They stay where they are. They're yep. country people. That's yep. where they like go. Most and, of them haven't even been out of their state. And because they are landlocked, they typically don't encounter those who are coming and going. Because most of the people that come and go hit the edges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I've always thought everybody should travel, yes. and move in their life as much as possible. As much as possible. Um, to see different points of view. My dad's Coast Guard, so he's lived. I've almost lived on every kind of state on the coast of the. United States, and we got to go to the Virgin Islands, we got to go to uh, all these different places. Um, so I think that's it's really important um, yep. for not just America. Uh, I'm just speaking as American, that's how I can speak, but I think people in India, I think it's, you should always try to broaden your horizons, yep. not stay where you're comfortable, make yourself uncomfortable. That's why I like this, the, his traveling ones, as well as if you've never seen Bizarre Foods, yeah. 
Bizarre Foods is great because he goes to the farthest reaches of the world. And it's not just the weirdness of what he eats. He doesn't relegate it just to that at all. It's about the difference being something that you experience and learn something new about a people and a culture. And how often when you learn something new about a culture, you realize, wow, we're actually not that much different. Yeah, yeah very good. But it's also crazy in this, the, the fact that there's no spices. No spices. I've been cooking on my channel for a couple months now, I guess. And one thing I've learned, there's always, always turmeric, there's <laughs> always red chili powder, there's always um, just a ton of different spices, mm -hmm. and it, uh, garam masala powder, there's, and obviously the north and south have different spices of their own, and but there's always spices. Right. Tons of them. Dried spices. <laughs> so the fact that, I mean, I guess it makes sense, obviously, they're a tribe, and so they're in... They don't go to a market really. Eat. No, they can live off, of off the land. land. Right, they have to that live with sense. what they've got. But it's just crazy making Indian food without turmeric, garam masala powder, or just stuff like that. Just that's crazy. <laughs> Which is also fitting because so many times people want to stereotype India, mm -hmm. especially Americans. We're guilty of it before OSR, mm -hmm. and the, India doesn't let you stereotype it mm -hmm. in those ways. You go and you find out. Oh, really? There's a part of India that does that. Yep, there's a part of India that does that. Yeah. <laughs> it is very, very diverse. Anyways, this is great. Let us know uh, more Gordon Ramsay videos. I'm hoping they have like this sectioned off. Full segments. Full segments, not cutting them off. Yeah. So if there are, let me know. <laughs> Dina,